College football is back, and we're back on the Big Mountain, where we bring you a fresh take on college football betting focused on the Big Ten and the Mountain West. Hey, it's great to have you again. We are going into some of our expansion talk. This is our fifth episode. This one is going to be mainly focused on Oregon State, Washington State, and the Pac-12. Yep. There's just a ton of stuff to talk about. It seems like almost every day there's something new breaking. Um, and we've got, a, a, in my opinion, a really juicy piece here that I have not seen reported very much. Uh, so we're going to start with that. It has to do with letters that were sent from uh, the University of Oregon and the University of Washington back in the beginning of August. So we're going to show those letters to you. The second item we want to talk about is a, a potential merger uh, between these two Pac-2 schools and the Mountain West, yeah. kind of get into uh, a potential relegation and promotion type of, of system. Yeah. So a little bit out there, but it, it's interesting. I think they're all uh, understanding that you may have to think outside of the box to, to make something work. Yep. And, and, and I give that a lot of credit. You know, um, you know, if, if they're going to be bulldogs and stuck in their ways, they're not going to make it work. So let's right. let's try to make it work because I think it can. Um, for those of you that have heard our past episodes on this, you know I'm I'm – big into trying to make make something like that work yeah and then the last item we just want to give you an update specifically more washington state kind of uh focused we have not talked about uh the athletics advisory committee that the president there has um started so i, I do want to uh, go over that and we want to end with a poll we want to hear from our viewers on this we've got over a thousand views on most of these episodes so we love that you're liking this stuff. We want to bring you uh, new information, and we want to hear from you on, on where you're at with this because, you know, you're hearing our opinions. We want to hear your opinions. So we'll, we'll end with that poll. Yeah, we want to hear the perspective of all the different fan bases because this affects so many schools. Absolutely. It affects the, some of the Big Ten schools that have left, some of the schools that are still in the pack, the Mountain West schools. Uh -huh. We want to hear everyone's opinion in that poll by by you giving us your comments. We've loved the comments so far. So far. Yep. We want some more comments as part of that poll. Yep, yep. So let's start with what, what I would call the breaking news of, of the episode here. Um, and, and as we probably know, as our viewers know, last Monday was a big day, uh, September 11th, with the first hearing of what appears to kind of be the start of a, a bit of a messy legal battle uh, between the Pac-12 members. Uh, I'll use the term members loosely. Um, but a judge ruled on that day in favor of Oregon State and Washington State to have a restraining, a temporary restraining order. Yep, temporary. So, uh, you know, a step in, in the process that uh, some would say obviously was in favor of the Beavers and the Cougars. I think it's just a, a step in the process of trying to make this less messy. Yeah. You know, let's, let's get some of these answers done before something happens that you can almost n either not unravel or make it would be even messier to unravel you know i look at it i looked at it as a pause button hit the pause button until you, we can figure out who are the voting members of the right. pack right and, and you said that i think in the last episode yeah. i think that's that's a great analogy uh but with that uh and with that hearing and some of the documents that were uh, put into that hearing um it just became public here a day or two ago uh, that there were some letters dated august 4th 2023 that was sent to the Pac-12 conference commissioner yep. from both the University of Washington and from the University of Oregon regarding their departure. And I'm going to put these letters up on the screen. I'm going to read one of them. They're they're very very similar, um, like extremely similar letters. I'm sure, they shared the form. Clearly letter. have <laughs> yeah. shared them, and and I would think have shared them with subsequent schools after this. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but, but they basically say that these letters are not delivering a notice of withdrawal at this time. So stick them on the screen and I'm going to read it over for you. Um, I found this very interesting. Uh, and I'm going to read the one uh, that was sent uh, from the uh, University of Oregon. So um, it says here, I write to inform you that the University of Oregon will not be delivering a grant of media rights authorization to the conference for any time beyond August 1st, 2024. For the sake of clarity, the university is not delivering a notice of withdrawal from the conference at this time in contravention of Chapter 2, Section 3 of the conference bylaws. The university shall comply with all obligations and expects to continue receiving the benefits related to being a member of the conference 
through August 1st of 2024. While the university expects to remain an active and participating member in the conference until that time, I understand that the university will be excluded from conference discussions pertaining to matters occurring after August 1st, 2024, such as media rights agreements and new conference member considerations. This coming from Kevin Reed, Vice President and General Counsel. As I said, a very, very similar uh, letter came from the University of Washington, but it makes it explicit in what th at least their yeah, definition right. of a member, non-member, and when that takes place is. I think this is very telling. This is what I have been alluding to in our previous episodes. I know that upset some people, uh, but this is black and white that they are delivering this notice specifically, and we talked about the media rights issue last episode, yep. specifically about the media rights and the timing of that, and they are withdrawing themselves from that discussion because it will not affect them mm -hmm. next year. Makes total sense to me. Right. Um, it also is extremely explicit, written explicit, that they're not issuing a notice of withdrawal. I know, I've read our comments, that upsets some people. But I think this written letter is very telling and I would say is probably a form letter that then the other schools used after Washington and Oregon uh, left the conference. Yeah. This, is, this is not me knowing. Yeah. I mean, we have these two letters from these two schools. Uh, but I, I would certainly think, given that these are very, very similar, there's probably talks with the others. So um, I have some other opinions on that, but I want to get Steve's opinion. I know sometimes he counters what I have to say. Yeah. So what are you thinking here, Steve? So I have three points to make. There. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, you and I have been on this since the very beginning that the, the, the general media, the national media, has just been reporting that there was notification. Yes. But they never said, what was that notification? Was that just the public acknowledgement that they're planning to leave? the the conference and what, go to the big 10 which is what i've been saying all along that's what a lot of people have been using right to say they've given notice right was there letters um we didn't know there was we no hard reporting on it there was no hard facts there was Correct. no evidence on it uh and we still don't know some of the other teams but for now we've got this is the first time we've actually seen a letter yes oregon state and washington so i think it is significant for that reason absolutely the fact that the, this is the first time we can actually see that they submitted a letter saying and, and and from their perspective that they're not withdrawing right they're just letting them know that they don't plan to continue after the date that's that's on there correct so, right um and, and they're very explicit in their letter yes yes and, and i mean it's very black and white yes and, yes so my second point on this is um oregon and washington this whole time have been a a, a package deal they operated in tandem. They left in tandem. Yes. They so it is very so. It's obvious why they shared this with each other. It's obvious that they shared this with each other, right. and that makes total sense because they operated in tandem. Right. It's very possible. I think that it's very possible that they shared this with the other schools. However, I will say I think those four corner schools and kind of Colorado separately, but the other three of the of the four, yeah. the Utah, um, Arizona, Arizona, and Arizona State. State um, they did a lot of stuff that was different from Washington and Oregon. They really weren't always in sync. So it's possible that they share this or it's possible that this was something that the, that, you know, one of the lawyers passed around or it's just a standard form letter yeah. that is standard in these things. So that'll be interesting. I'm really interested to see way back when did USC and UCLA deliver something like this or not? <clears throat> Those four corner schools, did they deliver something like this? But at least we got this first peak, which I think is really interesting for Washington State and Oregon State. Well, and, and Washington and Oregon. Yeah, Washington and Oregon. And it has been said that, again, this is, this is firm, factual letters. Yeah. But it has been said that USC and UCLA withdrew themselves for the same reason as stated in this letter the media for the deals. media rights yes. deals. Yeah. So it only makes sense to me that this letter really, now we don't have the facts, yeah. but really would apply to the other 10 schools if they wrote it and if they submitted it as, yeah. as Oregon and Washington. Yeah. I think certainly UCLA and USC, what we've heard about those schools directly uh, lines up with this letter. Yeah, and it's possible they use something like this. And it, it's also possible that, I mean, they were a year ahead of everybody, and they were just ecstatic to move towards the Big Ten. This might have been a lessons learned. Washington right. and right. Oregon might have, whoa, yeah, that, yeah. that was, yeah. you know, it didn't work out for them how they left. We're going to do things differently. So we'll see. That'll be interesting going forward. But this is huge I, to see these letters. So 
Now, here's my third point. Okay. okay? Yeah. Um, and, and you and I, I like to play devil's advocate. You, yeah. Um, so I'm going to continue to do that. So you, you've talked about the letters being very explicit from the Washington perspective mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. Oregon perspective. Mm-hmm. So as a de- devil's advocate perspective, um, great. It's great that they think that. It's great that they're making that argument. I understand. But uh, the other schools might say, or particularly Washington or Washington State, Oregon State, well, that's great, but you announce to the world that you're going, you're changing conferences, so right. we consider that to be notification. Uh, and in the bylaws, it doesn't say you need to give written notification. It just says notification. So that'll be a bone of contention that's only going to be settled by a judge. Absolutely. Uh, frankly, it doesn't matter what any of them think. Right. It matters what the ju- what the judge thinks. Absolutely. I'm just going off of the facts yes. here. And I'm not saying their definition of withdrawal or not withdrawal is accurate. Right. But they were explicit they in were. saying we are not withdrawing at this yes. time. So, again, I'm not here to be the judge on this. Yeah. Um, and that'll be here, here, you know, that'll be figured out by the judge. Right. I'm just saying it's clear what they thought. Absolutely. And until now, we we have been assuming what they thought. Right. But these letters are very explicit, and I, I, to me, I just opine that all, at least all schools since then, over the course of August and September, beginning of September, would have followed suit with this. I don't know that they did. I would think that they did. Yeah. And I'm I'm interested to see the. If there is so the media, the local media in yes. Washington and Oregon, yes. um, dug and found this yes. and, and published these. Washington State, yes, it yes. Was, this and, was out of Washington, yes. right? And I think that there's a specific, there's a unique set of circumstances in those two states because one is going to the to the one school in each state is going to the Big Ten and mm-hmm. making a whole bunch of money, mm-hmm. and the other one's being left behind. Mm-hmm. I really wonder if those other states, if even the local media would dig that far, or even if the the other schools care as much. These these four schools seem to be the ones that have the main stakes in how this is going to come out. Well, and it's the beeves and the coops. Yes, absolutely. It's not Oregon and Washington. Right. They they already know what they want to do. Absolutely. And they think they're good to go and, and able to do it. The beavers and the Krugers yes. are the ones taking the stand, call it the final stand of the pack two. Yeah. And without that, this would be a done deal. So right. I give a ton of credit to them. I understand, as I said in the last episode, I know what these schools, these communities are dealing with. Yeah. You know, I watched some episodes of reporting from students in Washington uh, state and, and what this means to them. I get it. Yeah. Uh, it's not an easy thing. Yeah. And the impact of these schools in my opinion, is far greater than many of the other. Like for USC, they're ecstatic they're going to be in the Big Ten. Absolutely. That's not the case for Washington right. State. And the thing with USC, and it's such a unique circumstance because with USC, there's a lot of stakeholders in L.A. who who value both USC and UCLA. Yeah. Both of those teams are moving together. Yeah. And Arizona, Arizona and Arizona State are moving, moving together. together. This is so unique with it Washington is. and Oregon because they're divergent. Yeah. So I just, I wonder if we'll see the scrutiny in the other states. For now, it's fascinating I, focusing on Washington State and in on Oregon. I, I don't think you will. Yeah, I don't think so either. But anywho. That's all my thoughts on yeah. that part. Well, let's go to the second part here. Um, I, and I found this extremely interesting when I read it. It just, it just broke here about a day ago. I'm glad we're doing an episode here. Um, but this is the OSU WSU potential merger yeah. uh, with the Mountain West, uh, and I'm just going to go over this. I found it really interesting. I don't know how likely that this is to happen, uh, but but there's been some reports that both Oregon State and Washington State are contemplating, and we're going to get into some of the options that Washington State, in particular, is truly contemplating here in our, our third part of this yeah. episode, but uh, are contemplating a merger with uh, building a relegation and promotion system for football and for other sports. We're here talking about football. We're yeah. going to focus on football, but it's important to understand there's many other sports that this is, this is affecting. Yep. Um, a two-tier system where the Pac-12 keeps its status, right. the Mountain West keeps its status uh, as a mid level conference and uh and what potential does that have uh this would certainly be some outside of the box thinking definitely i I think it's needed here if if oregon state and washington state want to try and and maintain the pac-12 name yeah um and so uh the two leagues would would maintain existence so we'd still have both the pac-12 and the mountain west they would keep their branding they would keep their status sounds like a match made in heaven um (laughs) The goal would be then to add two more teams to this 
new Pac-12 Mountain West merger. Pac-West, if Pac-West, you will. Pac-West, if you will. Yeah, there are all kinds of different names you could call it. Um, which then, with 16 teams, you would divide that into eight different divisions. And you'd have kind of the upper Pac-12 division. And we t- I actually talked about this kind of a pie in the sky thing a couple episodes ago it's interesting to see this kind of kind of play out again uh, as a as a potential yep. i don't know how potential it is but again having a one division being your pack 12 and maintaining the status of the pack 12 and one division being your mountain west and being you know the status of what the current mountain mountain west is um which teams then would move up so to speak you know, if you're Mountain West fans, you're going, ooh, who's moving up into the what would be the upper division or the Pac-12 division? Gets a little bit messy. Um, but some ideas that have been floated basically uh, is that the top Mountain West teams would move up. The top Mountain West team in any year would move up. Two and three would have to play each other to see who is able to get promoted yeah. to the, the upper division, the Pac-12 division. And then the lower teams in the Pac-12 division, six and seven, uh, eight would automatically drop. Six and seven would have to play, and the loser of that game would get relegated down to the Mountain West Division. Right. Um, really interesting stuff. I mean, these are very meaningful games. Nobody's going to want to get relegated. Everyone's going to want to get promoted. Yep. Interesting uh, atmosphere with that. I think it could make for some really cool, interesting games outside of bowls and all that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, so, it, again, it creates kind of a promotion and relegation game with real stakes for uh, for both of these divisions. And then you maintain a Pac-12 game, a Pac-12 title game. Yeah. Um, and you could maintain a Mountain, Mountain West, West title, title game. game. Yep. Um, so again, this is all in theory. Obviously, the court case <laughs> yeah. has to come before any of this right. can get, get ironed out. They need to know who members are. Back to our, our first topic. Um, the two teams that were brought up as potential additions, I found very interesting, and I think they fit in well here. Yeah. North Dakota State, South Dakota State, fit in pretty well with with the Mountain West, in my opinion. Two so, real, highly successful very FCS highly successful. teams yes. that would have to move up to FBS for yep. this work. So we've seen. I found that really interesting. I have I have no idea the likelihood of that actually happening, but I'm glad to hear that they're that apparently they're looking at some of these things. And it's a bit of a win win for both. Again, uh, it's a merger yep. where the both the Pac twelve and the Mountain West are maintained, yep. statuses are maintained, brandings maintained. You know, media rights potentially, although they're they're coming up, but they could be maintained. Um, it's it, I found it really really interesting. Um, yeah. So I wanted to make sure our viewers uh, knew about that. Yeah, it's it's super interesting. It's it's it sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, I definitely think that the most likely scenario is some kind of scenario where the the current teams of the Mountain West and whatever's left over of the pack merge form into something. Whether it's uh, it's they all go into the, the pack. They right. all go into the Mountain okay. West, or they create this new thing. And that sounds like a lot of fun. Like, I mean, I, I'm thinking, yeah, I want to watch those games. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I I uh, I, I watch a little bit of uh, English Premier League soccer, um, and and they do that. And and you know, sometimes the race for the championship at the end of the year is is just blown wide open, mm-hmm. and there's no drama or anything for that. But the fun part of their season. Um, is is that race for relegation? Sure, you know, see who trying not to be the the, the toilet bowl Bump basically, down, right? yeah, <laughs> um, to get flushed down to the lower leagues. So it it can be a lot of fun. Yeah. Now, oh, go ahead. can I just comment on yes, that real yes, quick? Yeah, I do have a bit of an issue being the Mountain West guy. Yes, I certainly don't want, and I and I get it. We're not a Power Five. I I understand Mountain right. West isn't a Power Five. But you don't want and to then, be looked at as the toilet. Uh, you don't want to be looking at that. <laughs> yeah. You know, it really dawned on me as as your analogy yes. you used the word toilet. I'm going. Yes. The Mountain West is no toilet. Yeah, exactly. Here. So um, that's a bit of maybe a bit of a concern that I would have. Yes. But hey, again, if it, if it gets us to an endpoint that we're competitive, uh, the the Pac-12 name remains, which isn't. For me, you don't care. I don't yeah. really care too much about that. But I get it from the OSU WSU side. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. Just don't call the Mountain West a toilet anymore. Okay. <laughs> so and that leads me kind of where I was <laughs> where I was getting with my last point on that is again, I think it's fun. I think it's neat. I'm glad they're looking at other solutions. Yeah. However, earlier I was devil's advocate. Now I'm going to be Johnny Raincloud raining on that okay. parade. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, it, honestly, it's just too cute by half. Um, it sounds fun. You know, it's fun to do articles and post them and I'm sure they got some clicks on that article. Yeah. Um, there, to me, that would, to, to be serious for a moment, that would create so much uncertainty. 
uh, conferences and schools, you know this. Mm. You want to have, you want to know what your budget is year to year. You want to know which which part you're in, how much money you're getting, what your budget is for that year, uh, and that that would cause so much uncertainty. And then the networks, their media partners, they're going to want certainty. What's our schedule? Who's in the Who's darn in league? Right, yes. Who's not in it? Because yeah. they want those certain markets. Those are yeah. so important when they're, you know, they're they're signing contracts for hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. Um, so again, sounds fun. I don't think it's very likely because of those reasons. And then also I think at the Washington state and Oregon state, and I totally get it. Like you said, this, this thing sucks for them. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's potentially devastating to their athletic departments. Mm -hmm. So many people, student athletes and employees of the school might be losing jobs, might be losing scholarships. And so I think this is one of those things. It's the kind of their last gasp, grasping at straws, yeah. looking for ways to salvage. Can they keep what they had before, which is going to be really hard to do. And this is kind of just a pie in the sky thing. Um, so again, I, you get to do, to talk about the fun idea, and I have to be Mr. Johnny Rain Cloud <laughs> Rain on the well, parade. But I just I don't see that actually happening. Yeah. Um, but I think that it is good that they're looking at the scenarios outside the box, like you said, because let's let's move forward. Because uh, eventually these teams are, are leaving. They're going, you know, Oregon and Washington are going to the Big Ten. They're mm-hmm. going to be playing in the Big Ten next year. Mm-hmm. Those other teams are going to be playing in the Big 12 next year. Mountain West is an awesome, fun conference. Yeah. The the pack, you know, had a long history, a long tradition, and there is value in that. So, and, and Washington State and Oregon State, they're great teams, great programs. Absolutely. I mean, they're doing great this well, look year. look at them this year. Yeah, they have great Dude, fan bases. Crazy. Uh, great athletic departments and, and they're playing each other this week yeah and, and so i you know i want to see what's best for them and i think there is a path forward um and i like that they're looking outside the box i yeah. just think that might be a little far-fetched well i think it's i think it's football versus economics yes football fun fantastic yes yes, yes. Epi- and you mentioned some of the economic there's much more to it than, yes. than that but economics much more difficult yes. and it drives every I mean, Absolutely. it's driving all of this yes. everything that's happened with the pac-12 is Absolutely. economic based it's not football based so from a football standpoint i love it yes except for the mountain west being the toilet but let me throw something out there real quick. okay all right so I, I quickly jotted down this would be in my opinion right now your pac-12 division yeah. of the pac-12 mountain west Conference. I don't know what you, they call the con- the, the Pac West. Okay, right here I'll it is, hear. and I this is exciting to me. Yes, I got to be honest with you. Here's what we got. We got obviously Oregon State and Washington State. Okay, uh, right. Boise State. Okay. Air Force. Okay. San Diego State. Okay. Wyoming. Okay. Fresno State. Okay. San Jose State. Okay. That's a hell of a division. It is. I think that'd be a lot of fun. It would Forget be economics fun. for a minute. Yeah. That's that would be fantastic. And 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 you know, you'd think San Jose State and some of those other teams will be fighting to stay up there. At San Jose State. Yeah. This year I would say probably San Jose State and maybe Wyoming, maybe yeah. San Diego State are the ones that are trying to stay in that that yeah. upper UNLVs thinking about trying to bump themselves up. Yeah. Again, I'm not talking economics. I'm talking yeah. football. That sounds fun. It does sound like a lot of fun. It really does. And 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 you know, and maybe I'm just uh, uh, you got me on that one a little bit. Now I'm like thinking, well, can we make this work? <laughs> can we share the revenues <laughs> enough where it takes away? Right, that's what I was gonna say. You know, you where can... it's one entity, but you have an upper and lower division. Exactly. But with, the... with shared revenues, you might be able to get there. Yeah. That's probably a whole nother episode for yeah. a whole nother time. We could yeah. delve into this yeah. super deep. Just wanted to bring it up yeah. as as an issue, but yeah, yeah. So the, the my, my my business degree hat at the yeah. beginning, I was thinking one way, and yeah. then you got my, you tickled my football fan <laughs> uh, frenzy there. That that was that was good. I like that. Hopefully, I tickled other uh, fans' <laughs> frenzies yes, as yes, well yeah. through through the the. We, episode we want to hear here. some comments on that yeah what do you sure. guys think of, uh, of that potential scenario? that potential that eight division the teams that i just mentioned i'd love to hear what if they're excited about it as i am yeah. i'm not sure if uh, if the beeves and the coops would be as into it uh but i think it'd be, be a, a, lot a very fun. interesting division i yeah. think boise state san diego state air force they're i mean you saw what san diego state just did to the to the not just did to them but a decent decent game with yeah. the beeves one of the best defenses uh one of the best teams in the country for pete's sake so and with the expanded playoff coming up 12 teams i could whoever wins that i mean that's oh, just like all bees nest yeah. uh, whoever wins that is definitely going to be in a good position to yeah. get a college football no doubt about it so let's go to our last subject if you're good that's good i want to get into washington state 
Um, and then we're going to get into our, our poll, although we did just ask about what they think about, yes, that, yes. about that, but we'll get to the poll then too. So about a month ago, we haven't reported on this and, and maybe that's our bad, but uh, President Schultz with Washington, Washington State set up an athletics advisory committee. This was back in, in August uh, to review the conference affiliate, affiliate uh, options. The committee has 16 members. It includes some alumni. It includes, obviously, student athletes. It includes faculty members. Uh, the first meeting was held about a month ago on August 18th, and they had three main options. And interesting enough, I actually didn't see this uh, before our first episode, yeah. and it's funny because... That was what we came up with, kind of. Yeah, these, yeah. these options are exactly what I had kind of talked about. Yeah. But option one was joining the Mountain West. Yeah. I, I mean, again, that's going to be a continued option. Uh, joining the Mountain West. Joining the, uh, the Atlantic... Athletic Conference, which has We've already shot since been kind of uh, debunked in that they, they don't yeah. want to move west. Right. So, uh, again, this is a little bit... Uh, Doesn't make any sense for logistics of those AAC teams not making a ton of money traveling, traveling from right. North Carolina back to Washington and, and Oregon. Yeah. Uh, so that one's probably kind of dead in the, in the water at this right. point. The other one was the possible expansion of the Pac-12 Conference, which is what they're trying to, to figure out right, right. now. Um, the group uh, is to provide both the president and the athletic director advice on what options they deem to be, uh, what the pros and cons are, frankly, of, of these options. Um, certainly, there's, as we said, there's ongoing legal disputes specifically for that, that option three. Uh, the criteria that they have asked to, to use is university visibility, competitiveness, student-athlete experience, travel, stability, and financial sustainability. Uh, so, you know, they gave them a list of things that, that they can rank and, and determine what, they, what they're able to do. The Mountain West, which we did report um, and has been well reported, the Mountain West Commissioner, as well as the president of New Mexico University, uh, President Stokes, actually met with uh, this committee several weeks ago when they kind of gave their pitch to uh, yeah. these, the, these two schools, uh, specifically Washington State. Um, and, and the Mountain West has said publicly that they would greet Washington State with with open arms. Oh, of course, um, they said it would be a good fit. Obviously, they, they would love to have them in. Um, President Schultz actually stated recently, as as much as this week, um, or as recently as this week, that WSU wants to find um, or wants to be in a conference where they can win conference championships, yep. um, and also one that fits both academically and um, is just a top top priority for them. Uh, to fit into those concerts. So, you know, I, I, that obviously makes sense. Again, a little bit uh, delayed reporting on that, but we didn't talk about that committee, and I wanted to make sure we got we kind of got that out there. Yeah. Uh, it seems like the president's really going to put a lot of stake into into what this committee has to say. If I could offer a few thoughts. Then. Yeah. So, first of all, throughout this whole process, I, I've watched, what, Washington State and, and Oregon State to a lesser extent, but yeah. definitely Washington State, what they've done, and uh, I've been impressed the whole time. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think this committee is a great idea. I think it's great to get this. Uh, we've talked about it. This affects so many people yep. in the community, at the university. It's not just the football players. It's not just the football coach. So many people. Um, and so for them to form this committee and get the input from students um, and from all kinds of other stakeholders, I think is a great job. It's a great move by them. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I give the administrations of both of those schools, I give them a lot of credit because they're in a crap position. For sure. And they're trying to make the best of it. Yeah. Uh, I also, I, 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 the Mountain West Commissioner, I always forget her name. Uh, Navarez? Yeah. Yep. I think she's done a good job of um, being proactive mm -hmm. and reaching out to these schools, letting them know they have a home. I think she's attended some games. Yep. Uh, she's met with, with the stakeholders. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think she's doing a great job not being too pushy because they're, right. they're still trying to figure out the fate of the pack and, and what their future is forward. So not being too p pushy, but being proactive, um, which I think is great. And I think it, it bodes well for what I think is going to happen, which is some kind of a merger or joining between the Mountain West and those two schools, whatever it's called and mm. however it comes out. So I give kudos to, to definitely to the administrations of both schools mm -hmm. and to the Mountain West Commissioner. Well said, yep. for sure. And, and you know, Schultz ha is is the chair of the board of uh, the Pac-12 too. Yeah. So kind of interesting. You know, we mentioned you said how ironic a little bit that is, and, and I yeah. think it is. Uh, but he certainly has taken a, a, a stance on this and 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 trying to get some answers. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see how this uh, shakes out moving forward. Um, he, and no one can question that he's advocating 
for his university he's, and the best result for his student athletes, all the student athletes at his university. Which is his job. Which is his, which is his, his job. job. Yep. Uh, I want to point out before we get into our poll, uh, there has been no movement from the courts. Not surprising to me. I mean, we're now about 10 days out from that hearing. Not that we would have heard anything in 10 days, but you know, the judge can say he wants to move quickly. Judges move quickly um, at a snail's pace. Uh, <laughs> I don't... And I, again, I feel bad for these schools because I'm sure they're ready to, to get going on this. Uh, we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong here, but I, I don't see this happening as quickly as many people are hoping it does and reporting it does. I hope I'm wrong on that, but uh, judges are notorious for being slow movers. So I, no, no word on that at this point. I, th I think you're exactly right. I th and, and I think and that's why I think the TRO was a good move and it was the best option for all parties mm. for the most part because um they could hit the pause button let the lawyer because that the the lawyer for the 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 pack was it was served on the plane all right. the weekend and right. had to show up monday morning 48 hours yes. or less right so and and the judge kept expressing that, that he wanted to do a hearing as soon as possible um, but he, he said, you know, we want to get all of those, those other, we, we think that those other schools would want to be a party to this. Yes. Well, something I brought up in a previous episode was some of those schools need to make the decision. Do they even want to be in litigation? Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of these schools are public schools. Mm -hmm. We don't know yet how that's going to work out in the different States. I, I'll just use Washington as an example. Right. Washington is a, is a state university. Washington State is a state university, both public entities. Mm -hmm. So we have no idea if, if I mean, Washington gave this letter, uh, University of Washington, but we have no idea if they want to be a party to the litigation. Mm -hmm. And even if their board would allow them, or even the laws in Washington would allow them to be opposite parties to, to each other right. in, in litigation. So there's a lot of things that have to be worked out. I agree yeah. with you that it's, this is going to be a slow process. It's yeah. not going to be fast. Yeah. And no matter how that judge, you know, he's a small town judge. He said mm -hmm. he have what, 200, 2000 residents or something. Right. Yeah. Um, and, but this is going to be major lawyers from th these, these schools are billion dollar enterprises. Yes. Uh, and they're going to have large, robust legal teams that are going to make all kinds of arguments if they want to get involved in that manner. And this is something that's going to take a while. And and something that we want to do on an upcoming episode is really breaking down some of the finances, specifically of the PAC-12. What yep. really are the assets? What are the um, revenues? How does that affect the schools? Yep. I mean, there's been reporting that Washington State has uh, scaled back their, obviously, their athletics budgets and things. They kind of have to at this yep. point. Um, so we do want to get into some of the finances. That's not for now, but, no. you know, an upcoming an upcoming episode. Just as a little teaser to that, well, a big number we talked about in our last episode, that in, in the court arguments, it was stated that just for this year, there's $500 million mm -hmm. in revenue that needs to be worked out for this year. Right. So that's, I mean, that's huge right there. Huge. Yeah. So let's get to our poll. Okay. First ever Big Mountain viewers poll. I love it. So here we are. If you stuck around, we, we got to it. So the question for you that we want to hear, and, and the way to uh, answer our poll is just through comments. Yep. We're not going to uh, put any po uh, real poll down at the bottom here in the description or anything. Just want to hear from you. You can put the number. You can put uh, the description on it. So we got four options to this question. The question is, where will oh, uh, Oregon State and Washington State be in 2025, so football season 2025, two years from now, where are the Cougs and the Beeves going to be? So, so we, we got, got four, four options. options. Right. Number one, still in the pack. And I didn't put a number behind that. Pack two, pack twelve, pack, pack something. Eight, pack still in a, there's still 10. a pack in existence, yeah. and they're still in it. Yeah. That's number one. Number two, in the Mountain West. Okay. Mer not a merge, but just, just they join the Mountain, the Mountain West. West. Okay. Number three, merged with the Mountain West. So right. maybe something like we talked about with the Combine relegation, maybe entity. some other way, but yep. it's some sort of a merged Mountain West and Pac-12. Okay. What it's called, Lord knows. Yep. That's three. And this is in 2025. 2025. Not next year. 2025. Not next year. year after. 2025. Okay. Uh, and number four, they're an independent or they're in some other conference. So a little bit of a catch-all. You know, I, I didn't want to call it other. I, th I felt like that was a cop-out. Yeah. So four is, you know, they're, they're going to be in an independent or they're in some other other conference at that point so we want to hear from you stick the number in the comments 
Uh, let us know what you think. On the next episode, we'll put up a, a tally of, of where our viewers thought this was. Anxious to hear from you. You've kind of heard our opinions, but we want to hear your opinions. So um, with that, how, we good? I think we're good. Take All us right. out. Let's go. Hey, we appreciate you sticking with us. Got some good info here. As I said, we're going to keep going. We're probably going to at least do weekly episodes on uh, expansion. Certainly going to keep with this OSU, WSU uh, information, Pac-12 information. And I know Steve has some Big Ten stuff that he's going to want to do. So, hey. Big Ten, ACC, and Notre Dame. It'll be coming up in the next couple of weeks once this cools down. Big Ten, ACC, and Notre Dame. Teasing us. Yeah. All right. Hey, we appreciate it. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll see you next time on the Big Mountain.